today, we'll create a beautiful photo manipulation. I love doing projects like these, where you can really play with the colors, the placement, and get creative with it. This is going to be fun. Let's get started. If you'd like to follow along with me, you can download the exercise images in the video description. For this project, we have an image of a frame, a whale, and a splash. My plan is to place the whale so that it looks like it's leaping out of this frame and bringing some splashes of water with it. Let's start with the whale image. I chose this particular image because you can clearly see most of the whale's body, and it really stands out against the sky in the background, so this will be an easy selection to remove it from its background. I'll grab the selection brush tool. Then I can adjust the size of the brush using the bracket keys on my keyboard, and then click and drag to make a selection. If you ever want to remove from your selection, as a shortcut, hold down Alt or Option on your keyboard, and then you can click and drag to remove. Alright, with our selection looking good, I'm going to press Command or Control C to copy the selection. Then I'll go to my frame document and press Command or Control V to paste it in. I'll use the Move tool to resize and position this. Right now, the whale is facing the wrong way. I'd like it to come out in this direction. So with the Move tool selected, I'll right-click on this image, and then go down to Transform, Flip Horizontal. Now I can rotate it using this handle up here, and then move it in place. All right, with the whale in place, it's time for the next phase of this project, bringing in the splash. For the splash image, I want to select the splash and remove the sky. This is a little tricky to do, since the splash has a lot of little particles all over the place. However, because the sky is a solid blue color, we should be able to select the sky and then remove it. To do this, grab the Flood Select tool. Then I'm going to check Off Contiguous. That way, all of the blue will be selected, even if it's not touching. So I'll go ahead and click once in the sky to make that selection. I can see that some of the water got selected, but I think that's okay. I'm mostly trying to get rid of the sky and keep this white foamy splash. I can see that this dark blue area over here wasn't selected. So I'm going to change the mode up here from new to add, and then I'll just click on this dark blue area. That added it to our selection. So right now we have the sky and this dark blue area selected. I want to reverse this so that just the splash is selected. To reverse the selection, hold down Command or Control, Shift I. So now that our splash is selected, I'm going to copy it into our document by pressing Command or Control C. Then I'll go to the frame image and press Command or Control V to paste it in. Then using the Move tool, I can adjust the positioning of this splash. I like how this splash is looking in front of the whale, but I also like some splash to be coming from behind the whale. So to do that, I'm going to duplicate this splash layer by pressing Command or Control J. 
Then I'll drag this copy underneath the whale layer. And then I can go ahead and move that so that it's coming from behind the whale. So that I don't have repetition in this, I want to flip this horizontally. So I'm going to right click, then go to transform, flip horizontal. I think that makes it better so that this area isn't repeating in the same spot. Now that we have our splashes in place, it's time to mask these splashes so that they're inside of our frame. I'll turn off each of these splash images. Then I'll select the pen tool, and we can go ahead and make a selection of the frame. So that I can see the whole frame, I'll also turn off the whale layer. To make the selection, I'll just click to lay down my first point on this corner. Then I'm going to turn on rubber band mode, which gives us a preview of how our lines are connecting. Once you've connected the curve, go ahead and press Selection in the context toolbar. So now we have the frame selected. I'm going to turn on our first splash, and then with that layer selected, I'm going to press on the mask icon. So now that splash is masked to the inside of that frame. I'll turn on our other mask layer and make sure that it's selected. And then I'll hit the mask icon one more time. With those masks done, I can now deselect, so I'll press Command or Control D to deselect. All right, I think this is looking pretty good so far. I'll just check back on that whale layer. To make the splashes now come out of the frame at the top, all we need to do is press B for our brush tool. And I'm going to make that bigger with my bracket keys. And I'm also going to change my color to white. By painting in white on the mask layer, you can gradually reveal some of the splash. I'm also painting with a low flow so that I can gradually paint this on. I also want to bring some of the splash out from behind the whale, so I'll click on that mask, and then paint in white on that one as well. I like leaving this little corner right here, so that we can still see that this whole thing is a frame. I think I've painted a bit too much on top of the whale. So I'm going to go back to this top splash mask. Then I'll press X, which will switch my color from white to black. Then I'm just going to paint a little bit to remove it off of the fins of the whale. And I'll switch my color back to white, just to fill in a little bit. All right, I think this is looking so good. At any time throughout this process, we can continue to add more splashes by going back to the masks and painting in white. We just have a few steps left. First, I want to add a shadow behind the whale to make this look like it's really in this scene. Then we'll adjust the coloring. To add the shadow, I'm first going to select this whale layer, and then add a new pixel layer on top of it. We're going to paint the shadow on this pixel layer, but to make sure that I'm exactly following the curve of the whale in my shadow, I'm going to load the whale as a selection by holding down Command or Control, and then clicking on the layer icon. So now you can see that our whale has been loaded as a selection. With our pixel layer selected, I'm going to press X to switch my color to black, and then I'm going to paint in black, 
and it will only stay in the selection. I'll press Command or Control D to deselect, and then I'll move this shadow layer underneath the whale. Then I'm going to grab the Move tool, and I'm just going to use the arrow keys on my keyboard to move this shadow. It looks to me like the lighting is coming from this direction, which would mean that the shadow would be cast on this side of the whale. So I'll go ahead and move the shadow over to the left, and then down a little bit. To make this look more like a shadow and less harsh, I'm going to add a box blur filter. So go over to your filters and then press on box blur. And then you can increase the radius slider. This just adds a nice bit of fuzziness around the edges. Then I'll select the pixel layer and I'm going to decrease the opacity quite a bit. I want the shadow to be about the same darkness as the other shadows on the wall. Alright, I think this is looking pretty good for the shadow. Here's the before and after. However, I don't want the shadow to be inside our frame. I just want it to be cast on the wall. So I'll select the pixel layer. And then I'm going to grab the eraser tool and I'm just going to erase any areas where I don't want the shadow. All right, as a last step, let's adjust the colors. First, I'll select the top layer so that any adjustments will go on top of all of our layers. Then I'm going to go to our adjustments and apply a curves adjustment. I like using the curves adjustment because it gives you a lot of control with all of the different color channels that we have here. We'll start with the master, and I'm just going to darken this a bit. Then I'll go to our red channel, and to warm up the image, I'm going to increase the reds. For the green and blue channels, I'm just going to play around with their splines to see what looks good. So as I increase the green, we can see more green coming in in this area of the water. And it kind of counteracts the warmth that we added. I think I'll just bring this up a little bit. Then I'll go to the blues. And as we increase the blue slider, more blue will be added to the image, making it look very cool. But as I decrease it, more yellow will be added, making this look pretty warm. I like that look, so I'll keep the blue spline down. To emphasize the warmth even more, I'm going to add a pink rectangle over everything. So I'll grab the rectangle tool, then I'll click and drag out a rectangle, and I'll change its color to a light pink. I like using this trick to add a slight pink tint to everything, which really just warms up your images. Then change the blend mode to soft light. Right now, this is looking pretty harsh, especially on the flooring down here. When I turn this off, you can really see how pink it's become. To fix that, with the rectangle still selected, I'm going to click on this gear icon, which will bring up our blend ranges. Then I'm going to lower the shadows node so that less of the shadows are affected by this pink rectangle. Then I'll lower the opacity of this rectangle. All right, let's take a look at this lighting. Here's the before and the after. I think this is just giving so much warmth to this image, and it's really making it pop even more. And now I'll select all of our layers to see a complete before and after. Wow, 
I think this effect turned out so great. I hope you have fun doing this effect for yourself. If you want to learn our affinity workflow, then check out the free course below.